Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Dot Pro Show with Bricky CPK. Going to be joined by Z-Rock, of course, later on in the show. Really excited to be here once again on a brand new week of the Dot Pro Show. And once again, we do have a fair amount to talk about as we are getting uh, getting into the new season here. Uh, hopefully, things will be starting in the near future. In fact, that's uh, one thing I plan to talk about in our first segment that we usually do, of course. Uh, but uh, before we get into that, I do want to preview the show coming up. Of course, I mentioned going to be joined by Z-Rock later on. We're going to be talking about plenty of these roster shuffles here. Uh, but I also have a couple of really cool guests on today, including Tomato. We're going to be joined by Tomato, formerly of Infamous. Talk about that situation there. Uh, him leaving the team ultimately, a little bit of drama behind it. Also, what his TI-7 experience was like and what his future holds. Now, a, a uh, I want to make a, an, an asterisk on that real quickly. When I recorded the interview with Tomato earlier in the week here, it was literally the day before the announcement came out <laughs> of his new team. Which is uh, which we now know, and again we're going to talk about it later on. But it was announced Tomato is going to be playing with Cancel, Kezu, Weha, and Soxa. That new five man team going to Europe, baby. That's going to be fun to see him over there. But keep that in mind when listening to the interview with Tomato. We still talk about you know possible future plans, and he does make some hints there at this roster. And of course now we know it, but it's still definitely worth a listen. Also going to be joined by BSJ Banana Slam Jamma. Uh, or something like that. What, what is it? Banana Slam Jam? Banana Slam Jamma. That, that's what it technically stands for, I guess. BSJ, he's a popular streamer, of course, does a lot of uh, content as well as far as being a teacher. But also, he's getting back into competitive play. Uh, has never really had the most success, but uh, he just announced his new roster with Team Leviathan. Uh, it's him, Jenkins, Nusham, Noble Wings, and Slayer. Uh, fun five-man roster there from the North American region. We'll talk with BSJ about not only his recent experiences, once again, at TI, as a fan at least, but also moving forward to what he expects to have happen this coming year so a couple of great guests as you can tell you do not want to miss uh those uh those interviews those segments coming up here shortly but before we get into that of course let's kick things off with the good the bad and the ugly all right so starting with the good right here Roster shuffles are happening. It's just an overall good, uh, honestly. I know it's, uh, you know, there can be a little bit of drama that comes from it. In fact, a little bit later, just a very short while here, we're going to talk about that. But overall, it's pretty cool to see. I always love this whole roster shuffling situation. Now, as I made several times, several points before, this is the first one I personally have gotten to really be a part of. Again, I didn't really break into the scene until it was really a September of last year. So we're almost coming up on a full year here that I've been involved uh, pretty heavily in the Dota 2 scene. But before that, I would always kind of, you know, hear things from uh, from the outside. Right. And, you know, I always knew about these roster shuffle periods being pretty crazy. But, uh, you know, being a part of it now, you definitely you could feel you could feel the. The excitement, I guess, of what's to come, what the suspense of, you know, what's going to happen. We do have some leaks, of course, and we've talked about that already in these couple of podcast shows from week to week. Uh, but uh, some of them haven't come to fruition yet, so we're still waiting on information. But there were a couple of announcements this week, including some updates to the EG roster. Peter Pantam, no longer the CEO. He's stepping down as the CEO to come back into competitive Dota 2. Now, he's not necessarily joining EG on the EG team, but he is going to be forming a new team, perhaps. Uh, Zai also announcing that he is one the one member to leave EG at this point. It was a mutual agreement, from my understanding. Uh, so they're going to be replacing Zai on the Evil Geniuses roster. So it sounds like, though, they're going to be keeping the other four. But again, that's just one of many. I talked about the Tomato team with uh, Cancel, Keizu, Weha, and Soxa. We have the Leviathan roster, as just mentioned. We have uh, the new Alliance situation with uh, with Loda is once again coming back, and they're going to try to build a team around him yet again. Uh, Era and Pablo now also announcing uh, that they are parting ways with the team as well. So the point is, we're getting more and more of these roster shuffle situations taking place, uh, and it's given us content to talk about, which is fun. Again, myself and Z-Rock, we're going to be doing that later on here, so don't want to go too much into it yet. But overall, big picture, it's exciting. As far as the bad goes, where the hell's the tournament information, man? I mean, here we are... <laughs> I, I know in the big scheme of things, what, it's only been, it's been about three weeks to be fair since post-TI, but 
we really haven't heard as much yet as maybe we expected. And and Z Rock kind of talked about this on the last podcast as well, where there's a one specific, what is it, ESL Hamburg? I want to say is the first really kind of big event that is uh, set to be happening here in the, in, in the near future. Yet uh, we haven't really heard any qualifying information on it uh, whatsoever. Um, so we're kind of sitting here in the dark as far as. When are we gonna, you know, when are we gonna hear about uh, the, these tournaments here? In fact, I'm pulling up the Liquipedia right now. Uh, yeah, ESL One Hamburg is supposed to be the first event that happens in October, at least. Uh, we still don't know any information on the open qualifiers yet. Uh, the only information that we do have so far, another minor was announced to be fair, which was cool. Uh, one of the PGL minors, I believe it was. But uh, there is an open qualifier for, I want to say, a Star Ladder event. That is starting this weekend, if I'm not mistaken, with uh, South America as well as Southeast Asia. And then the next weekend going to be North America, Europe. So we are finally starting to have some open qualifiers begin. But again, there really isn't a lot of information out there just yet. And it, it, it does worry me a little bit that there's a lot of the behind the scenes issues going on specifically with scheduling. I think we're already perhaps starting to see that. Because I, I can't come up with any other explanation as to why we're not hearing this information, right? I, I would not be surprised if Valve is kind of scrambling, working with all of these organizations here. Again, this was one of the the uh-ohs about this upcoming tournament season, which, as exciting as it is, it's a lot of Dota that's coming our way. And we're kind of just scratching our heads like, Jesus, that's, that's a lot. I mean, how are they going to fit that all in? Well, we don't know yet. We still don't know when the season's technically supposed to be starting here with what's open qualifiers and it closed qualifiers and of course into even main events coming up here from minors to major so i mean this is a little bit of a rant it's it's ultimately may not matter in the end i mean obviously i we're eventually gonna hear about it but it it is a little bit frustrating even as a spectator i, I assume especially as players that uh, we really aren't hearing a lot of public information, at least in terms of what's uh, what's going on with the with a lot of these tournaments and, and getting things started here. So hopefully that does start to break out here within this next week. We've kind of been saying that over these last couple of shows. Gonna keep saying it. We are again getting a couple of tidbits of information, so it's not like we're getting completely left in the dark. But especially with the, once we really get going with the open tournaments uh, starting and then, of course, the close qualifiers, I think, uh, you know, may, maybe some of this complaining will stop perhaps. But uh, no, for now, it's, it's going to be on my bad list as far as uh, we, we, we need that information. Damn it. We need to know now. This leads me to the ugly. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to harp on this, too, because uh, to be fair, I, I did talk about it a little bit on last week's podcast show, but we had a, we had some development here. And so, as I mentioned from the roster shuffle earlier, um, the alliance situation now. So f- so once again, it was announced that so the previous week we had Hanskin, Jonas and fan and limp. Um, officially being removed from the roster, parting ways, whatever you want to call it. They essentially were kicked from the roster and looking for new teams on the free agent market. I wasn't surprised whatsoever. But again, I I feel like one of the biggest problems with Alliance as a team this last season was they just never really seemed like they were all there. They never really seemed like they were the team that, you know, we we know from the TI3 winning alliance by any means. And, and and it's not fair to think that. Like I've said many times before, this is a completely different team as well as this is a completely different era of Dota 2. You could argue, and I think very few would argue against this point, that overall the competitive scene is in a tougher spot simply because of just the amount of players that are there, let alone the development of players over time, than it's ever been. So to expect that just because they're playing under, under the Alliance brand that they should be winning all these events is just flat out silly. Now, overall, they did have very disappointing results. So again, that's I, I wasn't surprised that this whole roster shuffle is going to be happening. It was a little interesting to me that they were going to keep Era and Pablo initially, and I was like, okay, maybe build it on them. But now we do officially hear that Loda is coming back and they're going to build a team around him. And this kind of brings me back to what I sort of touched on last week as well, I believe it was last week's episode, if I'm not mistaken, in that Loda's, he's part owner 
In fact, I I don't I can't sit here and say I know this hundred percent fact, but I'm pretty sure he is uh, part slash majority owner even of the Alliance organization as a whole. Obviously, you know him and it, they they started it from the beginning. Him, Aki, and crew. I believe EGM is part of that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they own the Alliance brand. It is player owned, but part of that ownership means you have to put in the effort to keep the brand moving along in the esports world as a whole, not just Dota 2. They've made it very clear they want to be a brand in all of esports, at least in multiple games, uh, not just Dota 2. And they, they've they reached into uh, games such as League of Legends. They have a Hearthstone team, um, Super Smash Brothers. So I'm kind of just double checking right here. So they, they've been in some very, you know, very popular ones outside of Dota 2. Part of that is managing the players. Part of that is managing, you know, the events that those players go to and focusing on recruiting new players or focusing on recruiting new uh, games even or teams to pick up from different games or focusing on the marketing side. And from my understanding, this was the reason why Loda left in the first place last season later on, and that's where Era came in to step in, was because it became overwhelming. Are you telling me that now... If you can sit here and tell me that they they've hired people to take over all of those aspects and he's going to simply 100% be able to focus on playing Dota 2 and competing at the top tier level then maybe I wouldn't be as maybe I was wouldn't be as against this, right? But as I said last week as well, if I was a player seeking a team, yes the alliance brands is sexy, it has history, Eloda as a player is a very prestigious player, I wouldn't really want to play with him because knowing that he's not going to be able to put all his time and efforts into focusing on winning a championship. I really, and whether it's fair for me or not to question the drive of, of Loda as a player, I, 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 just, I just can't re- realistically see it being a human, if he has these other obligations of having to take care of the business side and the marketing side of Alliance, he can't be, he just physically cannot be putting all the time that uh, others will be on other teams to making sure they, they have the best outcomes possible. So I'm sure they're going to find a new roster and perhaps some up and coming players and things are, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out. But I, I, per, I personally just do not have the most faith in Alliance moving forward as long as this is the case. So, and I know this is going to be a hot topic for some people. And I know this is out there that are diehard Alliance fans or Loda fans or whatever. And I, and I, you know, I get it if you're against my opinion, but I really just don't see it any other way. So I guess what I'm getting at is that if I was Alliance, I would not want to build around Loda. I would want to build around, frankly, a player like era, which they had right there. Era and Pablo, I could see them building a team around that let Loda take care of the business side, if anything, coach perhaps, and see what you can make happen with that. But once again, they're falling into there. They want to bring him back. He wants to play, and I get it. He wants to be a player. That's fine. He has that drive. You can't. You can't. You can't do both. It's just. It's as simple as that. It really is. So that's my good, the bad, the ugly. Let me know what you think, as always, ladies and gentlemen. We got tomato is going to be joining us to talk about uh, his TI-7 experience, the infamous drama, and what his future holds. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, so I am now super excited to be joined by somebody that participated at the International itself. And uh, quite the star in, in the making, if I say so myself. It's been a lot of fun watching him throughout this last year. I'm going to be joined by Tomato, formerly of Infamous, now looking for a new team. How's it going, Tomato? Hello, man. <laughs> You're uh, coming off of uh, TI7 right here. You have a lot of fun? Yeah, it was pretty fun, actually. It was the best TI because uh, I got to experience it live. Um, as far as TI, okay, so so let's start from the beginning here. So you qualified for TI. What what were your emotions like? What was it like knowing that you qualified for TI and you're going to be going representing South America? 
uh, it's hard to explain. It's like one of those things that uh, you do it and you don't believe it. And then uh, I remember like one week prior to TI when we had to like make uh, our suitcases and stuff. We uh, I remember I was showering and I realized, holy shit, I'm going to TI. <laughs> like it's actually <laughs> happening. Had you ever been to the States before that or? No, no, no. It was my first time coming. Okay. So you arrive in the States, you know, you're getting ready to play and everything. You eventually got the group stages coming up. Uh, once you started playing the group stages, especially, did, would you say you kind of got focused into it or were you still kind of distracted? Uh, I f the first game I was a bit distracted. It was, uh, again, secret. I think I played uh, Co-op. But uh, I don't know. It, it was like a weird feeling because uh, I remember uh, there was an admin in a, like, a boot camp. They gave a boot camp, right? So uh, an admin comes in and he takes away our phones. And then I'm like, holy shit, these things are so serious. Like, I, I had never experienced such things. So I was like processing everything that was going on, you know, playing on the super good computers. And I had like zero ping too. And then, uh, I don't know, I was like super hyped. And then we lost the game <laughs> and I got mad because we lost. And uh, all those thoughts went away. <laughs> so the group stages themselves you guys actually i mean you finished ultimately eighth place in group a right there of course but i think for a lot of people you guys even did better than maybe many expected i mean would you say your group stage performance were you happy with how it played out in the end or do you think you could have done better i think uh in terms of uh, like being realistic i don't think we could have done much better but uh uh, I think we could have we could have done something better. I think we didn't prepare ourselves for the for the bigger teams. Like uh, we had some nice games against uh, not so good teams. Like I mean they're good, but uh, like you know how there was like these super scary teams. Yeah, we didn't prepare well against them, and uh, it kind of demoralized us. Cause I remember we played against LGD and they beat us both games like 15 minutes. Yeah, that was really something I remember. Well, you're you're a younger player yourself. Um, you're only what, sixteen years old? Yeah, I turned seventeen in like a couple of weeks. Jeez, that's crazy, man. Um, so you you're you got to compete in this event. I mean, was there so? Well, okay, well, let's, let's go with this. Well, talking about the main event, then you go into the main event, you play against or you matched up against OG. Obviously, what what was it like at that point, knowing that you're matched up against such a big name team in OG? I was already worried when I, like, I remember the the group stage finished and they told us, okay, teams are going to choose their opponents now. And I was like, oh my god, we're, we're going to get chosen by some big ass team. And then uh, someone published uh, the main event picture, like uh, the schedule, whatever. And uh, <laughs> so basically I see our team playing against OG and I tweet, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> What was it like to actually play against them on the main event stage? Uh, it was pretty fun because uh, I, I knew we they had like eighty percent chance to win, but but I still wanted like I I could have I could have won, you know? Like it's nice to like I don't know. It's like it's nice to play against somebody that you know could beat you, or most likely will beat you. So you just do your best like you don't care at all the outcome because like if they lose it's like such a big thing but if if we lose people are gonna be oh they try you know so so it sounds like that overall you were maybe satisfied with how you guys finished even though you got knocked out in the beginning do you think that your trip to ti was overall a good experience and satisfying for you yeah i, I think like those kind of experience are, are a win-win for everybody because uh even if you play bad or, uh, you know, don't play as well, it's like, it's so nice to experience all the stuff, playing on main stage, and, you know, like watch the crowd, and uh, group stage, like, they're so stressful, so like, you gotta prepare for so many games, and it, your main event seat depends on them, so everything's kind of important at some point, getting used to, like, sleeping well, it's like, there was, like, two hours difference, and it's not mm -hmm. much, but I, I went to China once, and, uh, to play for LAN, and, like, my, my sleep schedule was so bad, it was like, I was so jet lag, it was so annoying, like, all those things helped you for the future. That's how I see it. Yeah. What Now, would you say, though, from playing at TI and even playing throughout most of this year, again, you're still a younger player yourself, but can you see yourself 
continuing to play Dota at a top level and continuing to go to events like this? Yeah. I definitely see myself playing Dota for a lot of time. Uh, I'm not sure how much, but uh, uh, I don't know. It's like it motivates me to uh, to see that there's such a high skill cap and uh, I, I can achieve it. I believe in myself to achieve that. So mm-hmm. it's pretty fun. I, I enjoy my life right now. Pretty happy. Yeah, you, you got a pretty rad life going. E- even though you finished, you know, in that bottom portion right there, obviously you still came out with a, a good chunk of the prize pool there, uh, as well as some, a good experience, it sounds like. And on top of all of that, with the group stages and then OG included in the main event, was there a, a middle matchup that maybe you had the most fun playing against or you really looked forward to playing against a specific player that you got to play against that you were really looking forward to? Oh, I, I liked my Fnatic game. That was like the only game I remember that I was super happy. Was, uh, I saw kill Q like twice. <laughs> Queen of Pain shot of it. The rest okay. of the, it was like, I don't know man, the TI meta is so bad for mid players. Uh, I remember yeah. every game there was a Nyx burning my mana, or uh, a f- Earthshaker blocking me with Fissure, or maybe a Wyvern, you know, just take, tanking me to 50 HP. That was That was life back then. Yep, or a lich denying a creep in the lane. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a morphling with like 1,100 damage. Yeah, that was, that was life. Yeah. Did, did, would you say you learned from it as far as a mid player goes, as far as, you know, playing the game? Did you actually learn a bit? Uh, yeah, I definitely learned some, but uh, uh, I don't know how to say. I had like the ground mentality going into it. I was like uh, super hyped. To, to play, I was super mm-hmm. pumped up, motivated. I was like, oh, yeah. prior to TI, I was playing like twelve hours a day, and uh, and playing one v ones with some other players, like any pop players. And, uh, and then I come to TI, and uh, the meta is like so different. And uh, yeah, I'm just like getting stumped middle. I I cannot do anything. I cannot last hit. I just gotta sit there and not die. And I, it took me like a couple of days to adjust myself, but that's something like I value a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. Well, some uh, other experience you also got out of it was uh, you got to be on the panel, of course. So you guys being knocked out, you. It, it, I, I gotta say, I was shocked to see you on the panel, but you did a great job. What was it like being on the panel there? Oh, it was pretty cool. I, I wish it was a bit more organized because uh, no, no one really told me what to do, so I was just like asking everybody what to do. And uh, it was pretty great. I had a fun time talking with Day9, Rolini, Baikaz. I don't know. I don't know. When I came out, like, when they, they told me, okay, we're going live, one, one, two, three, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I got so nervous. I didn't know what to do with my hands. Like, where do I put my yeah. hands? And then I realized, like, the the table was made of glass, so I couldn't hide them. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. My hands were, like, 10 minutes there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that could be a nervous experience. I've been through that myself. But it seemed like, again, from my perspective watching, you actually were pretty comfortable. Would you say, like, as you were doing it, that you kind of got more comfortable and you realized you were just talking Dota? Uh, yeah, that's the most fun part. Because uh, they, they actually value my opinion, you know. <laughs> uh, when I talk to, like, some more players, maybe local players, all right. So I'm like, oh, I think they should have done A, uh, they did B. Uh, it didn't come out well. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're so smart, retard. <laughs> kind of <laughs> like that. But I, when I was on the panel, like they value my stuff. I told them, you know, Nyx is such an awful hero to play against. And then they they, like, they quoted me later on the panel. It was a pretty nice feeling. Yeah. Was there a player at the event, or even maybe a talent, a panelist, that you got to meet that you were really excited to meet like who of that was there at ti were you super excited to meet uh i was pretty excited to see like uh all those players that i've been watching for years how they look like in person you know i, I saw tc the first day i remember and i was like wow he's so he's so slim you know like he used to be a little chubby but now he's like he's more slim oh wow, he's so tall that kind of stuff <laughs> but uh, like the, the one i look forward the most was probably dendy and then uh okay yeah, so like when he came out for like the opening I bought thing, yeah, I got like twice hyped. It was like I knew it was Dendy like the moment they showed him, but uh, you know like he he didn't qualify, so I was like sad because uh, oh I'm not gonna meet Dendy. 
-hmm. And then he appears, I'm like, oh, oh, yes. And I, I got to take a picture of him. I was pretty nice. Nice. Did you get to play against the uh, open AI bot? No, I, um, I play against it right now. I, like, I used to parse my training. but uh, Oh, nice. I beat it once. Let's, I've lost like okay. 20 games, but uh, I beat it once. So I'm pretty hey. happy. <laughs> Beating it once, now. Nah, how did you beat it? Did you cheese it somehow? What, what was your strat? No, no, I. It was pretty funny because I have like I had a uh, perfect openings. I I had a decent block and then I last hit and I I would lose the game like instantly. The body just was playing, and then uh, I get like a super bad block. I miss the first three last hits and the bot starts diving me, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna call it, but I decide to stick around and I somehow I end up like killing it. Oh wow! And I, I started around the game. Yeah, it was insane. I had like the worst start and ended up winning. That's, like, That's pretty awesome. I think I broke the the bot's mind. He got cocky or something. Okay, it's it's pretty crazy being able to to do that though. It seems like that'd be a good tool. Like you said, you're using it as practice, actually, in training for yourself. So, it, is it, do you think it actually does help you as a player? You know, playing against that bot. Uh, personally, I think uh, it doesn't help much, but uh, it definitely helps you something. Uh, it lets you see what's important in laning. So, uh, the bot prioritizes some stuff like harassing you over last hitting. And then uh, it's something I've been applying recently to my games, and uh, I've gotten quite success from doing it. It's just a small thing that I noticed. So um, blocking you know, helps you a lot, like practicing block. And uh, I don't know, I use it as a... Like, I lose a pop and I'm super angry, so I just go make uh, connect to the server, play the bot, and I I give him all my anger, you know, all my hatred. Yeah. Okay, so n now I want to talk about not only your future, but leading into your future here. Obviously, post-TI took place, and there was... There was, well, I mean, let's be honest, there was a little bit of drama that came out uh, concerning your situation and Infamous as a team. I, I talked about it on our last week's podcast show. Um, I guess there was some, uh, you know, opinions. I'll, I'll put it that way. King Tekka specifically gave his opinion on the situation. W what is your hold? So if you want to give your take on that, like, so you left the team, correct? Yeah, I left the team. Okay. Um, is there really much you want to say concerning that? Like, how how was it like being a part of that team? Or, like, do, do you think uh, did King Tekka have a good point with what he was saying, or what, what what's the deal there? Uh, what King Tekka did was pretty dumb. I'm mean, I don't want to go much into detail, but uh, I'm gonna try to make it the more general I can. Okay, so basically, I have I had a bad experience with King Tekka, like overall playing like teammates. So uh, we have a team meeting, and I'm like, I don't want to play with you guys again, but like, not with you guys again. Like, uh, I don't think this team's going anywhere, blah, 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 blah. You know, I don't like Intec anymore, all that kind of stuff, you know? And I'm like, I wish you guys luck, see ya. So uh, people started asking me why I left the team, right? And they asked me about my ex-teammates, because like, they're interested in playing with them. And I told them the truth. So uh, Kinteka mm -hmm. hears all this stuff and uh, he gets angry because I said some stuff, you know, to others. And then uh, he makes that post on Facebook, like he he published some stuff that was supposed to stay on the team, you know, no one should hear about it. Yeah. And uh, you know, like he said stuff that's partially true, but it becomes a lie because uh, it's it's not the truth, like one hundred percent. So uh, people just like. I just read it and started thinking stuff, and it was pretty awful. So I, he attacked my dad directly, and uh, you know, like he mentioned some stuff about uh, like traveling and, and all that kind of stuff. Like my dad required to go with me so I could attend to TI. Like if my dad didn't go, I wouldn't play. You know, all that kind of stuff is so out of context. And uh, you know, it's like you have this team meeting and you talk stuff, and then he posts this on Facebook. And it's, uh, I think that's where he went wrong. Like, you don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. I, I am curious. Do you think that maybe there were there, something of this was maybe affecting your play as a team at TI itself? Do you feel like you were playing at your best at TI as a team, or were there issues that maybe were holding you guys back? Oh, uh, we had a lot of practice issues. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't want to go into detail why or who, but uh, basically, like, we didn't train much prior to TI, and uh, it, I mean, it showed in the game, so uh, it cost us a lot. Like, uh, we use group stage games to learn when we should already have known that, so mm -hmm. it was a slow process. Could have been much better. Okay. All right, well, it's done. You're no longer part of Infamous. Now, of course, we got the Tomato Future, like we've talked about. You're a young player yourself, so um, I don't know that you really have any information you can break to us yet or tell us, but is it safe to say that you're in the process or have found a team even? Uh, yeah, uh, I, it's not 100% confirmed, but uh, I might be playing in Europe, and uh, that's, that's oh, all wow. I'm going to say, yeah. In Europe, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have to like move away from home. Okay, have you? Well, yeah, I found that because last year, before you played with Infamous, you played with uh, Team Freedom, right? So mm -hmm. you were playing with a North America team. Is this European team? Is this something where you you yourself wanted to find a European team, or is it just an opportunity that came up? Uh, I think I was pretty open to anything. I've got a lot of offers. You know how shuffles are. It's, uh... They're pretty messy because uh, someone invites you to a team and then things all suddenly down and then there's a new free agent and uh, every team kicks everybody just to get that guy, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, I got like, uh, I don't want to say like I'm hot shit so I got like 10 offers but I got like <laughs> two free offers, you know, from different regions and yeah. uh, so I ended up choosing this one, well kind of choosing this one because I thought it was the best. I, I really like... Uh, exploring unknown things for me and i think it's like unvaluable experience like going to you might like going to europe i've never been to europe before and then playing europe pubs only by doing that i think i'm already improving you know not only as a player but like as a person i think absolutely i i cannot agree more i mean if you have the chance to travel around the world at a younger age like yourself uh, let alone also be able to play a video game where you have a chance to make a lot of money I say go for it. So I personally am excited. I know a lot of people are out there going to be excited to hear that as well. So, um, well, uh, with that said, Tamana, you know, best of luck moving forward. We look forward to hearing the announcement when it does come out. Uh, any shout outs? Anything you do want to say here? Uh, shout out to my to my Russian fans. Shout out to the any Dota fans and my, my some of my Peruvian fans because uh, I know there's some guys that love me, you know, they put my, my picture, you know, like my fan page picture as their profile picture. It's, it's insane. <laughs> Excellent. So it's pretty cute. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your support. Yeah, how I, that's something I forgot to ask, actually. What was it like with fans at TI? Like, did you have a lot of fans coming up, taking pictures and everything? Oh, it was pretty weird because, uh, you know, I came in and in Peru, I'm kind of superstar, you know, not like... I'm being cocky or whatever, but like people come up to me, you know, they, they ask for you. pictures. Yeah. Uh -huh, I'm known, very known. But uh, in TI, I, I was not known at all. I remember I walk in the red carpet and no one say hi to me, you know, no one look at us. <laughs> and then after the panels and my interview, people started like asking me for pictures. I ended up taking so many pictures with fans. It was pretty fun and cool. Good stuff, man. Well, again, we look forward to hearing more and uh, best of luck, Tomato, moving forward. Uh, thank you. All right, guys, so now I'm actually super excited to be joined by the man known as BSJ, a popular streamer, also now going to be competing in the competitive Dota 2 scene once again here. How's it going, BSJ? It's going well, man. How about you? I'm doing good, man. I'm actually, uh, I'm currently in the, doing this old hero challenge. I, I, I assume you've done it before yourself. No, man, I, I hit Coddle, I think, and that was back when I was playing with friends and I was always the one required to carry because they were all pretty bad. And so I played Coddle like four or five times with them, and it just never happened, and I just gave up. It was like my seventh hero in or something. Can't carry as the Coddle. It's a little too difficult, I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm actually making a purpose to kind of grind it out, both for the sake of learning, but also, you know, just for fun for some stream content, I guess, and... I'm like 27 heroes in right now. I, I got past Invoker. I played Support Invoker, actually. Nice. To uh, make that happen. So I've been having some fun with that, though. Um, but yeah, sure. no, I, I'm actually excited right now when it comes to competitive because 
we have a lot of stuff going on, right? We have the post-TI shuffle, and you happen to be included in that. So uh, first, to kind of lead into that, your new roster was just very recently announced here. It's yourself, Jenkins, Newsham, Slayer, and Noble Wings, what I'm yes. looking at here. So that's the roster. How did this roster come about? Um, I had played with Slayer about a year and a half, a little over a year ago uh, on Enemy GG. We hadn't had too much success as a team, um, but I kind of knew after that team that if, if I was to play with somebody again, it would be him. He's really good to work with, uh, has a good idea about the game. And then I guess he just knew Noble Wings or, uh, you know, he likes to go by Sammy Boy now um, as his tag. But uh, he knew him just from playing pubs with them and they had been talking and they they th- they kind of liked each other's approach to the game. Um, and then I've kind of me and Jenkins both do the educational stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I do it for Game Leap. He does it for Pugna. And we've kind of like ran into each other in pubs and we've always like been on good terms and. Kind of just were like needed an off laner and got Jenkins and his best friends Newsham. So uh, that kind of just filled in our roles. And uh, that's it, it kind of was something that started with me, no, uh, me, Noble Wings and Slayer in like June. And we were like, OK, after TI, we'll find two more players. And then okay. we found the pair. What well, was it safe? Because I know that you were at TI. I unfortunately didn't get the run, chance to run into you, but I saw you there. You had, you know, you had your fans hanging out with you and everything. Celebrity you. Um, totally. what, what, what was part of the TI culture though, again, being this roster shuffle period, a lot of these teams going through that, were you a part of that? Were you ever like in the inner circle of maybe looking into other teams or was that never really a part of that for TI? Um, not really. No, I think that a lot of, a lot of players that are looking for like new players on their team and like they're trying to scout around quite frankly, they, they base themselves a lot on experience and results. And that's something I, I don't think that I've proven that I have. And even though, you know, I am one of the higher and more players in the North American region, um, I think it's just one of those things where I haven't really proved myself yet in the competitive scene in a way of like making it to a big tournament and like placing high in the tournament. And while I did talk to a bunch of people and I kind of knew a lot of the shuffles, um, I didn't really put myself out there because I kind of had plans already and uh, nobody really approached me either. So that was kind of ex- I kind of expected that, though, because I know okay. I need to prove myself. So, well, kind of going off of that first, something we've talked about on this podcast several times is the idea of a amateur league almost, you know, so an opportunity to give p- players like yourself that maybe haven't been able to prove because they haven't been on a top tier team or whatever, gone to a big event, as you mentioned, but giving them more opportunities to prove themselves, I guess. Is that something that you would like to see more? Is there something that you've thought about that could help with that? I think it's like kind of a, I've, I've been, I've thought about this. I've contemplated this kind of subject and the problem that I think is with it's like it's like a noble notion. It's like a nice idea. Um, but I think the problem is, is that like at the highest level, Dota is like so much more entertaining than it is at like even just a step down because the teams are just so much better. And like what it looks like to see a team slightly worse is a bunch of mess ups. That's what people see and they laugh. And mm-hmm. people I think that there's almost a stigma in the Dota scene of like the need to make fun of people <laughs> who are messing up and Quite frankly, even at the highest level, people mess up a decent amount. Um, it's just a lot of the times the mess ups aren't even visible to yeah. to the to the people that are watching. So I think it's it's tough, and I think it's something that could be useful. But I think that this like whole mi- minors major system with all the qualifiers um, is like a step in the right direction, and I and I think it's kind of goes along with that thought of like adding an amateur league type like tier two ish. Um, Dota scene uh, I think that's like a big thing uh, but for as far as I know for like I, I don't think there could be much prize money if for mm-hmm. for watching just because it's not nearly as entertaining so I don't think it'd be like as feasible if you know if you know what I'm going with yeah uh, well what about something like the in-house league that again just came back here with the FPL uh, I don't know how interested you are in that as a, p- a player but is that something you could see perhaps being a positive or Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we've tried in-house leagues before, and I think people have learned from them in terms of, like, why they went bad. It's kind of like if you play pubs and you have a teammate you don't like or someone you don't work with very well, and then you're forced to play with them over and over again because you're in an in-house league. Um, And that's something where I think they've done a good job every time of fixing that. But the problem is, 
I think it offers a few players to get in. I know they have like some qualifiers that allow you to like play your way into the league um, from like lower level leagues. But at the, for the most part, those leagues are very beneficial, but they're really only for the people who are already in. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of hard to mix them with pros because while I'm, I'm definitely a step down from any of the players that you see that like all the famous players that go to TI and everything like that. But I've, I've had my experience in the competitive scene and for players who haven't, it, it's, it's quite a gap between those and, uh, high level, like high skilled pub players. There's like quite a gap in terms of communication, like teamwork. And it, and it's very frustrating to play with them. And I, and I, and I know it's not just me that thinks that. And that's like, I think it's a problem and it's, it's hard to work with. And I think that's why it's so hard to bridge the gap between, uh, competitive and pub play, even if there's like a league like this, which, is very helpful. I, I think it's great, honestly, but yeah. I, I don't think it does the best job of helping the people who are trying to get in, get in. Yeah. So focusing on you specifically, well, what are your personal goals in competing in Dota 2? I mean, obviously you'd be so, like, I'm sure ultimately, you know, winning TI would be nice, but what are your realistic goals? Because you're a full-time streamer, you do the whole, tr- you know, the training studies you mentioned there with Game Leap, uh, you're a great teacher of sorts, is your ultimate goal, though, to, you know, be a true competitor in Dota 2? Oh, uh, yeah, man. I, I mean, I was like a sp- I was a sports player all my life, basketball for like 20 years. And and uh, I, I ended up running track in college and everything. Like all I cared about was being the best. That was like my sole motivation. And Dota is kind of a game where it's been really cool because I feel like I've been able to compete with the best. But it's also like super frustrating that uh, you that there, you just come up short so easily. It's such a grueling environment where you just like place third or fourth in qualifiers and lo and behold you're just doing nothing um and it's and it's super it's super exhausting like that but my goal as a player i mean i i want to make big tournaments i i wouldn't be on a team if i didn't think it had a, a serious chance of making it obviously winning ti is like like you said you know we'll we'll worry about that you know after <laughs> we've after we've taken the 20 steps between that and yeah. where i'm at now uh, but I want to be competing in, in qualifiers regularly. I want to be qualifying for at least some minors in the near future and probably like a major by the by next summer. This is like the first team I think I've ever played with uh, where I'm captaining and I feel excited about the cohesiveness of the team, like the mm-hmm. fact that everyone's on the same page and they like working together and that they're growing together. People are telling each other what's wrong with their play and like other players are like adjusting to it. And it's weird to say, but you can tell a lot about a team in like the first week, week and a half. And we've only been scrimming for about two weeks now. Okay. And it's like the improvement rates really high. I think the only problem our team could have is that we're a bunch of 7k, 7.5k players. So you just kind of have that mechanical skill gap between us and the 10ks. Uh, but at the same time, the players are very knowledgeable. They know what they're doing. They know what they're talking yeah. about. And honestly, I, I think Sammy boy is going to be a premier player in, in the scene. Like if he, if he's young, he's, I think he's only 18. Uh, and he's, he's 7,800. And I think his knowledge of the game because of his lack of experience is less than all of ours. And his mechanical skill is <laughs> incredibly high. Okay. Um, so I think he'll be kind of like the next breakout mid player. Uh, I, he, like every, every, every lane we put him in lanes, he's supposed to be good lanes. He's supposed to be bad. He just crushes them. So, okay. I'm really looking forward to this team. And like you said, what are my aspirations? Tournaments, qual- qualifiers, traveling, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm balls to the wall. You know, I, I don't, I don't do things half, so half, you, you want to be a pro. Yes. Yes. hundred okay. percent. All right, you know, I, I think guess I could clear- answer that in two words. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I love no, I love the the great explanation there. And you know, hearing more about Sammy Boys you're talking about, because again, that's a player that maybe is newer to a lot of people as his whole team, frankly. Uh, and it's you know, it's gonna be exciting to see what happens with you guys. But you yeah. gotta start somewhere is the ultimate point, right? So Exactly. Um talking about your streaming career though, as well as, you know, competing with a team like this, it's there's no secret, you know, if there is a streaming side, right? That takes a bit of your time, but then there's also, For you need sure. to really put in the practice and everything towards competing. Is there an overlap there? Are you worried that may be an issue or do you still plan to stream and then also compete? Uh, it definitely, it definitely causes issues. Uh, for me mainly as a streamer, I pride myself in my educational content as well as like interacting with my viewers. 
And that takes a large toll on you. You're, it's like you're not able to play 15 pubs in a row if you're also interacting with viewers, answering like educational questions, even like the occasional coaching session. Like if for now I do all my stuff on Sundays, so it technically removes one day from my week of of pubbing. And that's something where I, I, I'm a person that I, I went into the Dota scene with the intent to have my financial situation covered if I didn't make big tournaments. I, I didn't want to be reliant upon team salary as well as team tournaments. Mm-hmm. And that's something where if if we get to that point, then I'd much be able I'd be able to drop that kind of stuff, the extra stuff, at least temporarily, um, in favor of putting that extra oomph of time. But I mean I'm spending like 60, 70 hours a week on Dota right now. Um, including all of that stuff, which is still gives me, you know, 50, 55 hours. It's tough. Um, like you said, it does take away from it. Uh, but I, I think I have a good gauge of how much I need to dedicate to be the level I want to be. And I'm willing to sacrifice that stuff in the short term if it allows, if it's what is needed to, to make it to the next level. So to clarify, you're playing under the, the label Team Leviathan, right? Yes. Okay. Um, what are your expectations for Leviathan this upcoming season? Like, what do you see as realistic expectations for what you can do, especially with what a lot of people consider to be a very tough upcoming NA scene? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think the, the scene's going to be tough. Uh, I, I legitimately believe that our, our team is going to qualify for, for some major event. Uh, okay, I'll say minor or major. I'll say at least a minor uh, because uh, in the near future, like next four or five months, uh, is is what I'm guessing is the realistic expectations for my team. I think that I think that cohesiveness in the pro scene is is more important than overall skill. And I think that a lot of NA teams in the past, as well as even like up until now, have suffered with the ability to put together a solid like team unit uh, that works really well together and like uh, wins the drafts consistently. And I think that's why you saw a team like EG back in TI five. With PPD, who he just was the captain that created all this, he just made it happen in terms of he brought Americans, to, like or at least North Americans together mm-hmm. um, on a team that was able to take the high skill that this region has and combine it with like team strategy. And I, and I think that our team is honestly, a like, as far as I've seen in terms of the way that we play and the teams that I've experienced is, is, is at a much higher level than the most teams and the strategy level. Uh, for the NA scene, and I think that's if I think that will give us a shot, uh, a realistic shot to yeah. to make it to big tournaments. What do you think of some of these roster, both changes that we've seen, and then the rumors out there again, more so specifically in the NA scene? Uh, we even just had the recent news with, news with EG, how PPD is going to likely be coming back, Zai leaving EG. Um, do you think NA is? probably going to be the toughest it's ever been with what's going on very well could be uh, i'll be quite frank i, I knew what the t- i knew that was going to happen like <laughs> so it wasn't too shocking to me uh yeah. i just I, I i knew a couple of the players that ppd is going to be on a team with um but and you know i'm not allowed to it's not my place but uh yeah so i with that being said i i think eg is always going to be the powerhouse that they have been I think PPD's team is going to be scary. I think there's a, I mean, there's actually a decent amount of players that kind of did the whole come to North America to play as like an EU team, kind of like yeah. we saw at DC last year, and now they've kind of gone away. Um, so while I think NA is definitely tough, you have a lot of high level players and like people are catching up in this region. I also think it, it's not going to be terrible just because a lot of the players have left, uh, like for other regions. So, like, you know, Eternal Envy, for instance, I, I mm-hmm. think he's pretty much always represented a powerful team in North America. Like NP took a bunch of qualifier spots last year. And I think that um, those kind of teams, like I said, the, the scariness of those teams is when you play against them as a player is their overall strategy, their ability to regroup after like a trying game, meaning like a game that didn't go quite to plan is so like, and they just, they're so clean. They're so, they, they're just such a, like I say, a cohesive unit. And that's because they have a, a, a strong captain, players that have played together. And that's like why I think that even though the scene's very tough this year in North America, that a lot of the teams are kind of like reforming and like regrouping other than EG, but quite like we'll worry about competing with EG, you know, yeah. later on. That, that's, that's kind of, there's always been 
you know, NA Dota and then EG. You know, EG's kind of just the assumed good team in in the North American region. So, um, like I said, it, it'll be tough skill wise, and I think there's a lot of good players and a lot of good teams. But I think most of them being new to the scene in terms of as a as a group will give us a good shot. Well, I know myself and uh, many others, including a lot of your fans that watch the stream, are really excited to see what Team Leviathan brings. It sounds like you're you're ready for it. You're ready to be dedicated and should expect some uh, some fun things from you guys. And who knows what the what the ceiling is for you guys as well. So, want to thank you for joining me, BSJ. Any shout outs you want to uh-huh. give? Ah, uh, no, nah, man. I just want to give a shout. I just want to give shout outs to all the people who stuck by me through my ups and downs of my Dota career, and the people who watch my stream and support me and you know, also, I hope I can prove all the, the haters wrong. The ones that, you know, <laughs> treat me, you know, treat me with not the most respect. We'll call it that. So thank you for having me. All right. So now once again, joined by Z Rock here, we, uh, got more roster shuffling happening we're finally starting to see a little more actually happening rather than the rumors that we've been hearing which is pretty fun but uh z rock are you ready talk rosters you know i'm getting there we're starting to see some actual rosters not just uh rumors and drops so yeah it's gonna be interesting i'm uh i'm excited with what we've seen so far it's uh, up to you where do you want to begin well, so let's kind of just start with the timeline here. We'll sort of start in the beginning of the week. Um, so really before, you know, we recorded or like after we recorded last week's episode, we had a couple of teams from Southeast Asia specifically. Clutch Gamers was announced. Uh, you got J.O., Boombox, Armel, Bocorino, and Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't say I'm familiar with. I, 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 I know J.O. and Boombox and Armel, I guess, but yep. maybe not the yep. other two. Yeah, bocarino has been me. bouncing around playing on those like third to fifth place teams in Southeast Asia as well. Uh, fairly known, but yeah, Mac is definitely the up and comer. See how he does with them. I'm just always excited to see J.O. on a team. I want to see him do well. It's been a while since he's done well, but see if this roster's finally his uh his time. Yeah, who was J.O. playing before this with? Uh... He played on Archon for a long time. That's how well, I got to know him. But... Recently, though, he was playing on Happy Feet. That's right. Yep. Yep. In the Southeast Asian scene there. So, yeah, they had a little bit of a run. So, yeah, he's had some success, mm-hmm. as you've mentioned, uh, from Canada. I mean, he had some real success if you way back in the day. He played on EG in Dota 1, and that was uh, that was a big thing back then. But, yeah, kind of Old fell off. Player. Oh, yeah. jo has been around since, yeah, eight years ago. Okay. Yeah, so this is a team that, again, Clutch Gamers, they they had that run later on in the season and then kind of just choked on everything. <laughs> they just, when it came to the main events, they didn't do too well. So they're, they're swapping up quite a bit, it looks like, uh, getting ready for uh, a new season ahead of them. In fact, I'm trying to remember, who are the, what, Boombox and Armel are the two from before, I want to say? Yeah, those are the two from before. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the others are new players on the team. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes for them. Um, all right. So the next one here, this is a little bit bigger of a one. And now this is one that we again kind of knew because of this whole leak. Uh, but Eternal Envy, Excalibur, Ohio, DJ, and Pylai die going to Fnatic, EE going to Southeast Asia. Yeah. And Pylai die as well. I mean, it's it's definitely interesting. It, it kind of reminds me of like a secret 2.0. I'm uh, really curious to see how it's going to work for them. They've got people from a bunch of different languages. Uh, Excalibur, a uh, Chinese native, I believe, who grew up in Sweden. You've got EE, who is Canadian. Um, just a whole different mix here. I just I don't know how this group got together. Like, <laughs> That's what like, I'm wondering. <laughs> I, I mean, Ohio's definitely talked with a few different people before. I imagine this is just one of those things that at TI, they started talking to each other and it all kind of came together. Yeah, you have to think this is a team that was exactly like formed at TI, you know, with the after parties or just in between the games, whatever it was, just uh, talking with one another. I mean, I know he's not a guy who takes breaks. He, as soon as they were out, he was making moves, he was talking, he was organizing. So I have to imagine he's the mastermind behind all this. And I'm really excited to see what they do. Fanatic's a great org backing them. Um, I could see them being the, 
I mean, I think it's more of a tactical move for me. He got a very known player in Pilot Eye that he respects. He saw potential in Excalibur way back when Excalibur was floating around some teams. And I think he just believes they're going to be the number one seed in Southeast Asia with this lineup. That See, for me, Excalibur is the one that does stand out to me quite a bit as far as was that the best mid option that they could have got? It's nothing against Excalibur, but again, when we're talking about experience here, I feel like when you have Eternal Envy, Pilot Eye, Ohio, like these are very experienced players that have been around forever, yet they're going with a player that hasn't really proven himself yet. Who would you have chosen from Southeast Asia, though? I think that's the issue. I think yeah. he probably would have taken a more premium mid, per se, if he could have gotten one that would have moved there with him, but there's only so much he can do. That that That's true, and there is also the, the argument, I guess, to it as well, where when you do look at a lot of mid players, what's something we keep talking about is that they're these, these prodigy-esque players, rather right? these young players that really haven't maybe shown a lot. In fact, OG with Ana, I think, is a perfect example. It's kind of similar to that situation where they're going to hope for that of sorts because I feel Ana did a lot better than people gave him credit for. I know he had some slip-up moments, but he was kind of the scapegoat for the team in a lot of people's minds, which I thought was ridiculous. Well, Ex Excalibur was in Ana's position for a while. He subbed for OG before Ana came around. He got to play with a lot of those guys, and... Yeah, I, I think he definitely shows potential, and I think he opens up the chance to do that same type of flex thing that Liquid does with Miracle and uh, Matumbo Man, because mm -hmm. uh, I think he has his mid heroes, and the ones he doesn't play are the ones EE would. So we may see a little bit of flex back and forth there. EE must uh, respect Pilot Eye quite a bit, too. Everyone Fair. does. I mean, <laughs> Pilot Eye is a guy you've. A, he's always been smart, he's always known Dota well. He just performed like crap. A while back like when he was on the secret era early on especially he was known to like just die constantly mm -hmm. but he tightened up his game he's looking a lot better he really is just a player you've seen improvement of so Fnatic with the new roster right there again internal envy playing in southeast asia he has not played in southeast asia before right like this is new for him i believe it is new for him yeah because he's been to europe of course the secret he's been obviously North America, but I think this will be a new region for him, and we're, we're just seeing more and more of that, which you get, I, I personally like. I like the idea that we're seeing more of this international traveling amongst players and also getting a international group together, trying to make a team just specifically from a country, let alone a region. It, it can be difficult at times, and you know, you're not giving yourself the best opportunity, I feel like, so... Why well, not and be yeah, as though? I said, I think by locating in Southeast Asia, this is entirely a tactical move. They wanted to go yeah. find what they thought would be the, the weakest region and maybe try to capitalize on it. God, wouldn't you go to South America, though, if that's the case? Can you convince an organization to put up five non-South American players in South America? <laughs> that's true. That is a fair point. Yeah, I guess we'll, they we'll get based. to that one, though. There's there's a little news in South America as well. So <laughs> that there is that there is. Um, so this next roster right here, what is this fire drag? We have. OK, is this a, this is a Chinese team, I assume. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so Alacrity, Yang, Briant, 343 and Ajit. Yeah, I think well. technically it's going to end up playing in Southeast Asia because Ajit and 343 are Malaysian. Which is Southeast Asia. Um, so my guess would be the org is going to be based out of there. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah, no, they are Malaysian, according to Wikipedia right here. And Yeah, okay, uh, well, all these players are from Malaysia. Okay. Oh, are they all? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know anyone's name out of that, but Ajit and 343. Yeah. So definitely sense. interesting. I mean, like, Ajit and 343 had that. Uh, I mean, Ajit was on Warriors Gaming for a long time. Um, doing some work over there. So I think we're just looking at another inner region roster team, you know, mm -hmm. throwing together who they thought would work, sticking with the country native. And there is some merit to that because I believe WESG, I don't know if it's public yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They've been shooting messages around looking for teams for <laughs> the next WESG. So there's going to be some merit to having a team based, like a country based team. Yeah. We saw, what was it, TNC. They really kind yep. of broke out last year with uh, their victory. Yeah, and I mean, WGC. Infamous Tacoma, massive paycheck from it, too. Um, being all Peruvian there. So I think there's still going to be some scene for these uh, these country loyalist-type teams. Mm -hmm. 
So next on the list, uh, this one's just announced a couple of days ago even. In fact, uh, we already talked about it. I, got, <laughs> I had BSJ on. Uh, we have uh, him, Noble Wings, Jenkins, Newsham, and Slayer, especially after talking with him here. I, 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 I am excited for this team, but this is a tough NA region coming up here, man. Yeah, it's going to be very tough. I mean, we are going to have to see where this all goes, though, because certain rosters have disbanded, certain ones are shuffling. We don't really have that many strong teams already confirmed yet for NA, mm-hmm. so... I'm curious to see what they do. It's for those that don't know, it's going to be BSJ, Noble Wings, Jenkins, Newsham, Slayer, uh, playing under the Le- Leviathan team name. So I'm I'm super excited. I think they're always. I think they might become like the new complexity level, right? They're always on the fringe. They might break through to a qualifier, get to a couple lands, but gonna need to see a lot more out of them before I can make anything better than that. Yeah, I'll say he had high praise of this uh, Noble Wings player, also known as Sam something. Sammy boy. Sammy boy. Yes. Um, uh, is uh, possibly like uh, one of the mechanically skilled mid players. So, yeah, he's just got a temper on him. I've known Noble Wings for okay. a lot of years. We've played in house leagues. Uh, we even played against each other in a lot of little tournaments and stuff like that. He's played a bunch of these like tier four events, the five hundred dollar prize pools for a month long kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he he can win against the best. I've seen him beat the Sumails and Artesis of the world. But when he loses, he's a uh, not necessarily the most fun guy to be on a team with. All right. Well, that's uh, that's going to be interesting to see how that chemistry comes into play with that team then. That works out for them. Um, SG Esports disbands. This has uh, happened a couple times here. And as far as other teams throughout this roster shuffle, and now SG Esports joining the list. So uh, they're, they're five players announcing that they're, they're on the market now, essentially. Yep. Um, 40R, King RD... What are we looking at? Yeah. HFN, Tavo, and C4T. Mm-hmm. And HFN and uh, a couple of other players there, they've got a team that's been talked about. We saw the tweet. They got uh, invalidated from Black about that that yeah. roster with HFN and King Tekka um, saying, don't believe everything you hear. But <laughs> I do think there is merit to all of that except Dominic, except Black himself coming over there. Um from what I heard, that was basically the rumored team outside of Black. So I wouldn't be surprised okay. if they form a new team. It might be under Midas Club. It might be under Infamous 2. I don't know what team name they'll use, but I believe that'll end up coming together by next week as a roster. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I had reached out to Black actually last night when I heard that news. And I made the point. I was like, first off, grats on the team. And then I put in quote, I was like, if this is actually true, question mark. And then he responded like five minutes later. He's like, yeah, that's definitely not true. <laughs> so it's I, I have no clue like that's one of those like was there a possibility like was this possibly a, a, the case and then it backfired or like didn't go through or was this just a complete bullshit rumor from the beginning but yeah I don't know if we're gonna ever get to hear the full story behind that one because yeah. if four of those players plus somebody else that's not black ends up being a team you got to feel like there was some truth there at some point right that there was talks between them that maybe it could have been a thing and you can believe it with Black. Like, that's the biggest thing, too, yeah. I think, because he this guy has traveled around the world. Uh, he's played for China. He's played for Southeast Asia. He's played in Europe, of course. Like, he's been around. <laughs> Why not join South America when it comes to the list? So Absolutely. It, uh, it, it, was, it was believable, for sure. But it, it is not the case. So, yeah, again, to clarify that. But this disband is leaving the, the region pretty wide open. Like, yes, you have an infamous roster that is now in tatters. Um True. What what team is going to rise up? No team said they're going to make a move internationally and move down there yet. So, SA is wide open for a powerhouse to come up and start claiming everything. That's you know that, that's it's a little bit unfortunate, especially when you consider yeah the the two top teams out of the region, one making the major, one making TI, of course. Uh, now both essentially kind of falling apart. But you've talked about it before. I mean, this is South America, Dota, though, right? Like this just happens yeah Midas Club Elite and Elite Wolves are definitely going to have major teams they haven't announced their rosters yet but I I talked to Elite Wolves owner a lot at TI and he is wholeheartedly ready to have one if not two Dota teams looking to go through in South America so definitely keep your ear to the ground Uh, there will be announcements coming there at some point Um, I reached out to him recently to see what he's what he's got going but It's just a lack of info coming up. Everyone's still on the shuffle. Infamous had to change. It was just inevitable with all the drama going on there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll see. That'll be a a next week topic, I believe, that'll 
probably get a little more discussion. Yeah, we have more news on that. But speaking of Infamous, Tomato, a player formerly of Infamous, of course, had him on early in the show. He talked a little bit about that drama. Now, as I made a point at the beginning of the show as well, going into the interview that we recorded that before this roster had happened to leak here, or more so just come out, because the day after, Weha made the twi- Twitter post about it. Uh, so you got Tomato, Cancel, Keizu, Weha, and Soxa. A new European team. Tomato's going to Europe. I was going to ask what region out. they confirmed to play in because that was the Europe. one thing I wasn't sure of. Well, okay. the, the one thing Tomato hinted at me in the interview, which I was kind of excited for, was like, I'm going to go to the European region. And I was like, wow, really? And then this news came out. So I'm excited for him, but I, I do think that might be the hardest region coming out of all this. I think we're going to see a lot of... A lot of mid-level to upper mid-level teams come in that region, and there's going to be a ton of competition. Really? You think you're... I, man, I think Europe... I, yeah. Europe, Europe was arguably one of the weakest this last season. As far as putting up teams that are going to win TI, sure. As far as okay. hard qualifier region, I think they might have been the hardest or one of the hardest. Like they okay. had, they just had a bunch of teams competing for that one or two slots, and after the relatively weak showing outside of uh, Liquid, like I guess Secret did okay. I- I'm just curious to see how they're going to do things moving forward. At the very least, you had DreamHack announce they're going to invite a bunch of Euro teams, so that'll yeah. open it up for them for one of the first majors we're going to see. They'll probably get to go to that. Um, I-, I don't know, man. The way the major minor system's coming up. What region you're going to be in is going to be a huge part going forward. Well, this is the first one talking about this team here that I, want, I really want to break down because sure, Tomato cancel Weha. Last time I checked, those are three mid support. players. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. how it's playing out here? Tomato is going to be the one cancels the two, so cancel is going to be the actual mid, and then Weha is playing the four position. Okay, Kazu of course three, Soxa in the five. I don't have an issue with mids moving to four. I actually think it's one of the easier transitions in Dota because you're meant to be a playmaker in both of those roles. And yes, you don't get the farm priority, but you can still get greedy and get a bunch of levels. You can still do a lot with it. I mean, we saw Owie make a move to playing four and it worked very well for him. Uh, It's definitely interesting. When I looked at the roster, I was the same way. I'm just like, who's playing mid? Mm -hmm. Um, And to be fair, I think Tomato is probably the most skilled mid player out of all of them, but... If if they're feeling more flexible and cancel wants to play mid, then we're just gonna have to see how it works. My biggest team with this team, or my biggest concern with this team, outside of the whole, you know, having multiple mids, I'm not as concerned about that. I think they can adapt, but how young this team is and how lack <laughs> of experienced this team is is what really does worry me. From my understanding, of Weeha is or no, Soxa is gonna be the captain, mm-hmm. I believe, of the team. Uh, obviously, you know, again, he's been around a while. He's definitely competed at the top tier level. So from that perspective, sure, it may not be a huge issue. But again, this is overall is a very young team. Tomato, Cancel, even Keizu. I'm not sure how old Weeha is, to be fair, but um, I think he's a little bit older than these guys. But I, I just I, I just don't know, right? Like this is that that has to be at least a little bit concerning with this team, despite the talent on it. Yeah, no, no Weeha's young, too, though. He's only like 22. But a lot of these players do have experience under very big organizations. Weha has been under Secret, Soxa under DC. Um, they've had this coaching structure and everything like that. I think what we have to look forward to is what coach they're going to find. Uh, especially with the announcement that Blitz is not going to coach this season, he's going to cast. It's taking one good coach out of the pool. And I think a lot of it depends on Bulba. If they could get Bulba as a coach, I think this roster has massive potential. I do think that this will be a better fit for Cancel specifically as a player as well. Uh, referring to him with complexity last year. <clears throat> I, I don't know if Swindomelons was the best captain for him. In the sense that Swindomelons, again, he's known for being an intense captain at times. And Cancel seems like a very laid back. Like uh, He also felt the pressure. He mm-hmm. felt the pressure at several of the events. I, in fact, I remember at the, the uh, Boston Major even. You know, talk with him there. I definitely felt the pressure quite a bit. So, uh, I just something about this team because that younger, because that idea that you know it's not as much on them that uh, maybe he'll be able to perform uh, here as well. So I know Cancel is kind of one of those debated: is he really a top tier mid player mm-hmm. over just being simply a streamer? But well, we have a chance to find out here now. 
Yeah, absolutely. We're going to just have to see going forward because, as you said, complexity was a bit of a rough situation. The captain didn't really gel with him. And to be fair, I feel like he kind of got stuck in Kyle's revolving door. Um, Like they had their core three they wanted on complexity, right? And then they were just cycling out the other two so fast that the, uh, the pressure, as you said, it just gets immense when you feel like you have to be the one to do something different on that team. It just seems so hard. Mm -hmm. That's a fun roster, though. This is one that not really. Obviously, it wasn't part of the league. So this was one of those. I was like, oh, really? This definitely caught people off guard, including myself, uh, for sure. So excited to see it, though. It's, uh, you know, caught off guard for good reasons, I think. And uh, Tomato in Europe, again, going to be fun to see, as you point out, maybe could be uh, a little bit tougher overall. But Mm -hmm. see how he performs in that one position out, too. So. Uh, yeah, that, that was, so that was a big announcement. Then the following day, one that was a little more obvious, we, we kind of knew this was coming, but PPD officially announced he is stepping down as CEO of Evil Geniuses. Uh, Philip, um, I forget his last name, Aram or something like that. Yeah, Aram. Aram, he is actually taken over as the new CEO in the meantime. And PPD doing so because he wants to come back to play competitive Dota 2. Zai also leaving the EG roster uh, slash kicked, whatever you want to say. I I think it was more of a mutual agreement, if anything. Um, And there's no proof or nothing confirming this yet. But again, there's a likely chance PPD and Zai could end up on this new roster now as a result of this. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like they're going to end up on the EG roster itself because on that Facebook post at the bottom, they flat out said Evil Genius's Dota roster is RTZ, Sumail, Crit, Universe, blank. Mm-hmm. So I had heard at TI it was a bunch of rumors that basically the team is going to get gutted, keep one, maybe two players and build around them. But this was a pretty blunt post from EG. I absolutely yeah. agree with you. I think PPD Zai could pair up and go somewhere. But... It looks like the you know four of the boys in blue are going to stay together. Well, yeah, a little bit further on that too. It does say coach fear. Yeah, so not they, player fear. They they make <laughs> a point to label him as coach, and I think that's important because there, a lot of these rumors have been that he is going to come back as the new fifth. Mm-hmm. I seeing that makes me believe that may not be the case. Honestly, um, yeah, it's not a guarantee by any means. I mean, he definitely could come back as a player, and that would be cool to see, of course, but. I think they did that for a reason. I mean, the question is, do they already know who it is and they're waiting to make an announcement? Are they scrimming with a bunch of people to figure it out? Um, We don't don't know the behind the scenes. I haven't heard anything from anyone about that. And it might be one of those cases where they just don't know who the fifth is yet. What other potential supports are out there, right? Like, well, you got Misery is definitely a name Mm -hmm. that you would have to think about. But outside of that, Demon, would he actually be a name on the list? Could be. He's played with them yeah. before. Um, Just trying to think of like really prestigious support players that have a lot of experience because you figure if you're going to be replacing Zai, especially, let alone joining an organization like Evil Geniuses, support is not a role you kind of just bring in a new player, I feel like. Yeah, they generally go with established talent. They don't look for brand new players. But, uh, I mean, Yapsor could get poached, maybe. Yeah, there could be the poaching route. That's true. I mean, well, we'll just have to see going forward. We, we're going to have to wait for an announcement, but that's definitely one I'm looking forward to. Okay. Uh, then yesterday even, well, actually, I guess technically more even today, a couple more came out to end the roster shuffle. Well, not end the roster shuffle, but for today, for now at least. Um, a team from CIS, Team Spirit, actually announced their full new roster. Uh, ILTW and Biver joining the ranks of Iceberg, DK Phobos, and FNG. Actually, I believe we can officially call this the scraps of CIS at this point. Uh, getting okay. Biver off of his Navi little run. You've got Phobos and FNG from VP. Um, yeah, you've just got all of the people that are still around from a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's a way to look at it, sure. I mean, Biver's my Holland boy, so I am looking forward to seeing how he does uh, with now Spirit. I, I he, got, he actually got praised in Navi, I feel like, and um, he is a very good player, so... But I definitely yeah. think you're not far off there suggesting that, uh, you know, they're bringing together some players that just happen to be on the, the outside and we're looking for some teams in the region. Now, Biver is interesting because he is from Denmark. He's not he's not actually from CIS. Mm-hmm. He just happens to be playing in that region. Yeah. Once you break into a region, if you aren't the standout winning them tournaments type player, it's very hard to go to another region. 
Um, black is one of the few that I know makes those kind of transitions. Like most people, you get to know the other people in the scene, you scrim with them, and then if you end up teamless and they have a slot, all of a sudden, hey, we've scrimmed with you a thousand times. So, real yeah. easy transition, even if he's not from the region. So, Team uh, Spirit, who did you drop right here? It was uh, uh, BZZ and Vanscore yep. were the players that dropped as a result of these two coming in. So, yeah, that's uh, Team Spirit, they, they had a little bit of success throughout the last year. Overall, they're not going to be the, the top rated in CIS by any means, but they're definitely a top five team from the region and yeah. one that can compete in. Qualify for minors, if not a couple majors thrown in there. Yeah, they're in a good position for their region. And then the last one on the list here, um, this one I, I already talked a little bit ab about in my first segment that I did. Um, so really, I want to more so get your ultimate opinion on this. Um, that is Alliance announcing that go last week they already announced Jonas <laughs> Van Hoskin and Limp. Yep. Now they do officially announce Aaron and Pablo also leaving the team slash being removed. Loda is coming back. They're building a lot around Loda once again. What, what what do you think about this move by Alliance? The way they worded it kind of scares me. They literally said we are rebuilding ground up with Loda basically making the decisions. And for those that have watched a lot of my casts, I've been very vocal that I think Loda is not at the peak of his performance right now. That I do think he's slipping a little bit and struggling to keep up with basically anyone else in the scene in his role. Um, and with them just doing it this way where they're cutting and then rebuilding this late into the game, who's going to be left? I, I'm a little bit worried this team is going to fall very low in the tier two, like lower tier two of Europe because there's just not going to be any premium players left for them to get. Well, you mentioned Europe. This is a team that's been notorious for just recruiting in Sweden specifically. Yeah. So you also kind of wonder, is that something that they're going to try to stick to? <laughs> or are they actually going to be open to reaching out a little bit more? But it sounds like you and I are on a very similar page. As I said in the beginning, I if I was a player looking to join a team or looking to be recruited or whatever to play with another, you know, a, a big name like, like Loda, sure, he has a lot of history. The Lions organization does. My my biggest concern is is Loda going to be a hundred percent focused on winning Dota two tournaments, on winning Dota two games, because he is part owner of this alliance brand, and the reason why he stepped down later on last year was because it became overwhelming, because he did have to start focusing on the brand side, on the marketing side, on running, helping to run the other teams, such as their Hearthstone poker division, tournaments, or whatever it is. On his whatever I mean, he, it is, he's a guy with a lot of stuff going on. That that's absolutely true, yeah. and I do think he's just been around so long, but he hasn't really adapted to the meta ever since they won their TI, and they've they've kind of struggled. And uh, I just I've watched him a lot, and I, I don't think he's up to snuff right now. If he would decide to become like a five and become a captain, maybe that would be a great role for him. Mm -hmm. But i don't know we'll, we'll have to see what he gets going forward with players i'm nervous about it i don't think it has a lot of promise but we'll have to see yeah no i i'm very curious to see who they get because again some names that have been thrown out specifically sticking to the sweden theme is insania and mickey and i would not like to see that <laughs> just flat <laughs> I, I really would not like to see that it would be good it, for them but yeah. at the same time i would be hesitant to be like, oh yeah, this is your guys' best route of action here. But that's yeah. uh, another one of those. As we keep on suggesting, we're going to have to wait and see how this all plays out with the Alliance Ross situation. But then, so folks, keep it on the lines real quickly. Where the hell are these other players ending up now? Because now you got big names, Era, Jonas and Fan, Limp, Hanskin, even Pablo. Like, these are all now free agents. Like, where the hell do they go? I don't know. Pick a tier two team somewhere yeah. like that's the issue they've always been okay but none of them have ever been the best at their role none of them have ever been people getting front page reddit posts constantly about them or pulling in huge stream viewers or, or whatever you know they just don't have the exposure that like you know a a zai leaving gives them you know no so where they can land i don't know there's a lot of options i mean secrets got two open spots right now um i don't know there are places Limp for them to fall, but I don't see it being great. Well, L Limp is the one that, I'm just saying, his brother announced that he's coming back. He's ready to play again in Chessie. 
There's a team over there in North America that is looking for two players. I just complexity. really hope it's not PPD Zai Chessy is at core three. That ugh. Okay. <laughs> no. That that could be interesting actually too. Yeah, but no, I actually would I don't it know work. If that would be the case. PPD Zai Chessy Limp. Oh. Onskin would be a roster, right? That would Zai could uh, play off have signed a three, yeah. Yeah. That would actually fit positions. It sounds terrible. Huh. I'm just gonna say that, but it it, it could work. That could work. But all right, get all together right, with the Han right. boys. I like it. I like where you're thinking, Zero. That's that's enough. Uh, they could be called Han Trash. It'd be perfect. They could be called Han Trash. I, but yeah. I, I hope that happens. It's not happening. But I hope no, that happens. No. It would be terrible, but it'd be really funny. <laughs> it would be. Okay, but yeah, so roster shuffles, that pretty much gets you up to date as far as the uh the, the especially the bigger name ones. Yep. That has been happening here. Again, still, I'm sure plenty more to come. There's no, yeah, there's no deadlines that have been announced yet, right? I'm double checking that, but no. So we don't know that yet, and that kind of leads into what we want to talk about next is events. Like we're getting Event. little information still, <laughs> but yes, we we did get one announcement of an event happening, and that's the PGL Open Bucharest, soon three hundred thousand dollar prize pool happening soon. Yeah, month and a half. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown here. Basically, PGL did announce a four-day land in Bucharest, $300,000, eight teams. This is going to be PGL's minor slot. And I'll just get through everything first, and then we'll go back to it. Uh, EG and LGD going to be the invited teams, and then they're going to have their mandatory qualifiers for every other region. So those qualifiers are literally starting in two weeks. Yeah, a little bit less than two weeks. So those are going to be coming around quick. Um, basically it's just going to be a little eight team. They haven't announced the actual tournament of the land yet, like what the format is going to be, but I would have to imagine just a double elimination, but, uh, eight team bracket. Mm -hmm. So invites EG and LGD question mark. Yeah. Interesting start, right? You didn't it's take like... your one, two from TI. <laughs> you didn't, I mean, it just kind of seemed like they went the fan favorites, right? Yeah. LGD is a staple in China, EG is a staple in North America. Then, rather than see how these teams are going to do coming out of these roster moves, um, you're just going to go with people that are going to bring the viewers, which I think is a fine business move. Of course, uh, and that's something that is just going to have that's some that's something that will just happen with these third party organizations running these events because there is that business side that what's well, going to get the viewership that they do have to worry about that's understandable as you pointed out and ideally that will ultimately kind of work itself out in the big scheme of things as far as all these events happening over time it won't necessarily give advantages to one region one over the other or one team over the other but you know, this is the beginning of that. It's a good point to bring up. Now, I will say, kind of a counter as well, who knows if they reached out to Team Liquid or Newbie or whatever. Like, that yep. is a possibility. We don't know that for a fact. Yeah, we don't have so, roster confirmations for them yet. We have not heard anything official saying us five are staying together. We don't know if they declined it. Uh, there's a lot of question marks still to be, to be had. But I can say what I do know from this, EG is going to be a Tier 1 team. They always are. And they're playing a minor. That's true. It's the that first minor, though. That is a huge issue with me. They Yes, it is the first minor. That's fine. But mm -hmm. it, it just bothers me that they are 100% set on attending a minor already. Yeah. Um, th th this is this kind of goes back, like, the idea that transparency, right? We've talked about having transparency, how, how great that would be ultimately, and how this season seemed like we were starting to get a little bit of that. And with the whole points now, we're going to get transparency. Now, as I say that, we don't actually know yet what these points are even going to be still as events are about to get started. But the transparency in that um, we don't... Where was I going with this? <laughs> I just totally blanked. About transparency, basically, on, the, on the, the, the event itself in terms of how, how are they inviting the teams? Um, what, what are they going after as far as what are they looking for? Nice recovery. Not bad. I was just going to let you flounder so that for was, a little bit. That was but, awful. I, I um, had a point, and then it just poof. But And this is my big fear. Whenever you do like, 
I, I want to see more miners not doing direct invites. Because if you get rid of direct invites, I doubt EG is playing a qualifier to go to a miner. I don't think it would happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get they want to make it business-wise the most viewers they can, everything like that. But this is my fear coming to life already. Um, you invite arguably two of the biggest teams, especially coming out of a new roster shuffle. These are two teams you know are going to perform. You know are going to actually do well. And that just it bothers me so deeply oh yeah so, the, the, so i got my point the transparency that what is going on behind the scenes with for all we know even though publicly we haven't had a lot of these announcements of these tournaments happening but for all we know they are talking with these top teams and kind of figuring out schedules with them in terms of what they can attend and how it's going to work out so sure we got eg and lgd invited to this one maybe that's because Liquid and Newbie got invited to the first major or whatever, so EG and LGD were like, well, then mm-hmm. we'll just go to this minor here at this point. So I, I guess that's where I was ultimately going with that point there, that we don't necessarily know, and it kind of sucks. I would like for that transparency to be there, but just because we're not hearing anything doesn't mean there isn't something happening sure. and talking going on behind the scenes as well. Yep. No, so. I absolutely agree. Um the last first one yeah it is the first one that's true it's another eight team major which or minor which needs to be said so it's two official tournaments out of the first few now that have announced they're only going to run eight teams and they are doing full open qualifiers for every region which i was wondering if they would do versus just doing closed qualifiers because of scheduling and the amount of time it takes to run an open Mm -hmm. qualifier but yep definitely uh interesting to see I know I'm kind of curious to see how it works. I know there's a lot of CSGO tournaments in Romania, but there's not that many Dota tourneys. So what's the fan base going to be like? Yeah. Yep. Yep. How's that all going to look? But we're going to have a lot more info. I mean, we're going to have stuff like this coming out every week, at least bits and pieces. And hopefully, yeah, I'm really excited to piece it all together and and form a coherent picture for you guys, because at the moment it's so up in the air. That's that's what I talked about in the beginning segment there as far as it's just kind of frustrating because even for people like us who are doing this weekly podcast show and, you know, grinding the idea of what's going on in the competitive Dota 2 scene, we don't have this information either. So we would love to give it to you guys, but we really just don't know yet uh, because they're not really being the most open right now as far as all this information, despite several events that are supposed to be happening. Uh, Mm -hmm. in the near future so who knows who knows in fact the starlighter i league invitational as i'm looking at that it's supposed to happen in october october 12th is the main event date yet still nothing on that in terms of open qualifiers or anything (sighs) Yep. yep month and a half out not even well so that's the the event information that we had for this week and that pretty much brings us to uh to the end here i think for this week's podcast show i believe it does it seems like uh every week we keep getting bits and pieces i'm just waiting for the big meaty week where we get three tournament announcements and yeah full confirmed rosters but that's gonna be fun that and then like a big patch comes out start talking about that stuff yeah I will just give a quick shout out real quick to anyone listening tomorrow when this comes out. There is not a lot of competitive Dota going on, but there is a hell of a Counter-Strike tournament you can go watch. Uh, Dreamhack Malmo (laughs) running right now. If you want something to watch that's competitive, there's not much Dota, but go watch CS. It's a pretty good game. It is fun to watch as well, yeah. uh, I haven't checked that out yet, but uh, I'm glad you said that and not the Hearthstone tournament that's going on. Or any Hearthstone tournament that's going on. I keep that to myself. That's just your, your dirty my, pleasure uh, there. Guilty pleasure, yeah. Guilty yep. pleasure, yeah. But, All right, all right we'll man. Well, it out. I will catch you next week. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Dot Pro Show. I'm Breaky CBK, once again, joined by Z-Rock here. Ladies and gentlemen, wrapping things up, big shout out to uh, Tomato and BSJ as well for joining us on the show. Uh, looking forward already to next week's show. Plenty to talk about and already actually got some guests lined up, it sounds like. That definitely uh, should be some pretty exciting stuff for you guys to listen to. So until next time, guys, we'll see you then.